No black cats, just straight facts. Triple P certified. Listen, we can talk about odds all day. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It matters what's gonna happen. I have nothing to say. I don't even know. Uh, welcome to the Purple Labor Suit, everybody. This is uh, the show where we give you our predictions for every UFC fight that there ever has been, ever will be. Um, you know, we're, we're here, you know, off the heels of Dolodeze versus Amavov. Um, Dan, Alex, what's going on, guys? You guys both got the shades on. Um, did you lose your eyesight? Are you blind? Uh, are, are you? Are, is your future too bright? What is going on with the shades? I lost everything. I had one of the worst betting weeks of my life. I had to give my eyes. I had to donate my eyes to science just to make a little a little money on the side. Yes, I cannot see a thing, Luke. Um, but I'm here. I'm thriving. I'm looking to try and get some money this week. Dude, what's that difficult story of the guy who like they, he's cursed? He has no eyes or something like that because of a sin he committed or something like that. I, I, comment if you know what I'm talking about. There's something to do with a blind man. Am I thinking of fucking that book? Book of Eli. Is the Book of Eli? Is that the one I'm thinking of? Dan? Uh, I am not familiar with the Book of Eli. I was going to guess uh, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder. That was the route I was going down. As far as why I got the shades on, as far as why I got the shades on, I'm just a little too cool for school right about now. And uh, I'm fucking, oh, I, I am pumped. I am fuck. pumped. Fuck. Say whatever the fuck you want. Who gives a no, fuck? no, not within the first two minutes because we're going to get either demonetized or you we are not monetized. We aren't even monetized. monetized. But the possibility, the possibilities, Luke, of getting yeah. monetized. Plus the algorithm of getting this show across the channels, across the interwebs, get yeah, more people was, to watch. When you brought that up, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. And I think that we just kind of heard a thing, like things that other YouTubers were saying at the start of the show. And we just said them just to say them. I don't necessarily want the show to grow all that much more. I mean, it's already kind of, it's already kind of taken, it's getting to a point now. I'm like, I, you know, maybe we can back off a little bit, but I do respect you and I appreciate your, your efforts to, to do a clean show, uh, the noble thing to do. But um, also, no kids watch. I want to so. turn over a new leaf where, with respect to the law, we say Fuck whatever. Them kids. We say whatever the hell we want. And um, you know, there's a lot of there, there's a lot of people like we we gave a lot of people our wrath last episode. John Anik faced our wrath last episode. Mm. Um, Flamed. And we Sage Northcutt got a big big wallop and flamed. I want to say before we get into last week, next week, all this stuff, I saw Chael Sonnen cover the Sage North cut this situation. Didn't make it a minute into the video because the last thing I heard him say was that he's okay with it. He's okay with it. Now, if you watch every video that Chael Sonnen has ever put out, like I have, you know he's not okay with it. And there's just these weird videos sometimes where you click on his channel and you're like, oh, here we go. Chael's going to cathartically uh, release for me and let everybody know my thoughts to a million people instead of just a thousand people. No, he completely went the other way and defended Shane Northcutt. And it's like, dude, you, Chael Sonnen, do not believe that. Like, you don't believe that they, I don't even know his name anymore. Northcutt wouldn't fight. And is okay, you're okay with that? You're not okay with that, Chael. So what's his angle? I didn't even watch the whole video. I got so irate. I was like, nope, not why I'm here. Not why I'm here. I'm here to hear Chael say, Sage Northcutt did a bad thing. Right. Like a moral thing, a sinful thing, something that will keep him from the gates of heaven. Personally, I, I believe that. I truly believe that that will keep him from, from having to do it. Purgatory, maybe, but he he thinks he's going straight to heaven. He's that type of guy. And uh, I will tell you right now, Sage, not my God. He ain't letting you in. <laughs> <laughs> not the God I know. So um, this is the show, everybody. The Perfect Parlay Pursuit. We're pursuing the Perfect Parlay. We've all hit a Perfect Parlay. And we all maintain, you know, an above 50% accuracy, usually above 60%. But I've been taking a beating. Last two cards, I have not performed well. Um, I guess you could say it's an official funk. I'm in, I'm in an official funk. Um, doesn't happen often. Doesn't happen, uh, consistently, but it's two weeks in a row of me underperforming last week, the week of, uh, Driscoll's two plus and Sean Strickland, four correct picks this week, three correct, four, no, four, 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 four correct picks, four correct picks. Um, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to get right. Alex. He just got fired from his real job. So <laughs> Dan, his girlfriend, his, his wife's out of town. Dan's wife's out of town. He's doing. My lot. girlfriend told me not to bring that up. <laughs> Specifically, 
That's but that's true. fine. I that's didn't bring it up. I didn't bring it up. Live to the motherfucking Patreon because we we don't even. Some of us don't. Even, you think Alex was a uh, little bit too caged before? He's off the leash now, baby. He doesn't even it. send it to his fucking boss. He doesn't care. He's saying whatever he wants. He's got no boss. He's a man of his own. But he needs money. So get into that Patreon. Get in there for a full year. Um, you know what? We gave Dan all the money for the month of July for his wedding. Let's give Ooh. Alex all the money for the month of Feb. If you join this month. For a full year, I'll give your whole year to Alex since he just got laid off. We'll give him a we'll give him all of February. Um, I Valentine's said, month, Valentine's month. He's got to get that chocolate. He's got to get those roses. Come on, folks, help a brother out. If help me, help me. I needed the money. I needed the money. Help me, please. <laughs> if you are one of the Euro Under Kings loyal subjects, if you've ever won a dollar off any pick he's ever given you, and he had a perfect parlay right before the new year, right there in December. Right. Perfect parlay. The only bet he bit placed in that week. The only bet he put in the Patreon that week. The bet that he gave you, the picks he gave you on the show, whether you looked at the open bet sheet in the Patreon or not. And by the way, if you go to the open bet... Uh, ah! if you go, sorry, kids sleep and I forgot. If you go to patreon.com slash perfectly pursuit not only do you get an extra episode of the show every week but you also get access to an open bets google sheet with four tabs one tab has all of our picks one just every pick we've given that week and then the other three are our open bets that's what i'm betting what alex is betting what dan's betting that weekend it's obviously for entertainment purposes only obviously none of this is even real guys don't sue us no financial advice entertainment purposes only but if you just want a friend entertainment purposes see what we're betting on then you can go to the open bet sheet in the Patreon. Um, that's it. That's Maybe you gamble your mortgage on it. And by the way, the, sh- the channel is monetized. We have over a thousand subscribers and over 4,000 watch hours, but I never clicked the monetization button because why am I going to take a three quarters of a penny off of a fucking Clorox ad and make you guys suffer? No ads, no ads on this show, on this YouTube, even if it gets lucrative. How about that? Even Because think about it. If it gets lucrative and Clorox wants to come on here and advertise, and how the fuck are we too dumb to make money somehow? You know what I mean? We don't need Clorox's fucking money. We can get go straight to the fucking consumer. Whatever you want to give to Clorox, just give to me. Okay, so um, we got to break down a really exciting card. It's our homeboy. It's Joe Pfeiffer versus Jack Hermanson. And guys, if you know anything about this show, you know that we were on Joe Pfeiffer before we even hit the Contender Series, okay? We have known Joe Pfeiffer since high school, okay? So um, we're not on any kind of bandwagon. We're not any, on any kind of uh, hype train. We are the people who told you four fights ago, this guy is going undefeated to the belt pretty much. And th- that, that's that's uh, how we're probably going to be riding into this week. I mean, Dan, you got devil's advocate Dan down here. You never know what he's going to do. But we're going to take you through that whole card, top to bottom, main card on the YouTube, prelims on the Patreon. And before we do that, let's just review last weekend. So like I said, I went four out of 12. My correct picks were Medeiros over Quinones, Radke over Urbina, my fucking most confident pick of the night that nobody was on except for Alex. <laughs> Uh, Randy Brown over Muslim Salikoff and Moicano over Drew Dober. Those are my four correct picks that I gave on the show. Alex also had four correct picks. Brown as well, who was triple B certified. Radke with me, Themba Garimbo, and Medeiros. Um, Dan, though, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven correct picks, five incorrect, one push. Um, Dan leads. Who carry the boats? Me. I'll carry the boats for you, fellas. You're leading the way. You have the most correct picks, the highest pick accuracy. You're up above 60%. You, you, you are first place. I am last place. That's not how the year will end, but mm-hmm. that is where we are right now. Um, what do you have to say, Dan? You're the, you're the front runner. I mean, the best part about Dan, I'm looking at his picks. He got the last four correct. And to me, it's like that's the most important thing because if you can – get the last four and end the night, you can make up for a lot of mistakes. So talk us through your night. Yeah. So uh, the last four were a nice little honeypot. Um, I was fairly confident. I mean, listen, we're looking at Randy Brown versus Muslim Salikov. Come on guys. Like having a minus whatever, two fifty layup layup. Um, overall on the night though, I can't be too much of a bragger. I won $60. I mean, listen, being profitable is, is awesome. But uh, you know, we were, we were staring down uh, a little over a grand there. Gilbert Urbina, he sunk my battleship, speaking of carrying boats and whatnot. But, hey, listen, I'll, I'll give Gilbert another chance. You know, I'm, I'm second chance advocate Dan over here as well. So um, it's all good. I didn't lose any money. I only put 20 on it, and I tripled my money. And in the stock market, that's a pretty damn good night. So uh, the returns were there. I'm looking for. Bigger returns, grander returns this coming weekend. I did some good tape study, 
And uh, I think I'm ready to rock. I think I'm ready to to win big. So you mentioned Radke. Um, that was my, you know, I said for two weeks before the fight, when I saw him open as a dog, he's going to smoke Gilbert Urbina. Um, it's just a typical situation of people having a bad taste in their mouth from Radke and his performance over Garimbo. Um, and people over hyping Urbina because of his time on the ultimate fighter. Uh, so to me, it was a perfect storm of a guy, you know, and also the, the gyms uh, that they train at, that was indicative of the winner to me because no matter how bad you think of Rad, he's got good people behind him. So I, what I think is that was the dog shot of the night. That was my favorite play. I, I really wish I loaded more up onto that and made that just a solo bet. But uh, I'll be, I'll be honest. Everybody was kind of like making me think I was a little crazy because every, you know, between Dan and uh, everybody else in the discord and everybody else on other shows. I mean, I was like, I'm like the only one picking Charlie Radke and I'm emphatically picking him. Everyone says emphatically picking against him. I'm like, this is, am I crazy? But I did stick with him and uh, I didn't actually see the fight. That's the bitch of it all. I was watching it and then the baby woke up and I had to go deal with her. So I went and uh, addressed the baby. And by the time I was, you know, done doing that, the fight was over. And, uh, but I was still happy to see that he got the knockout. So how was that? Did he actually like knock him the fuck out? Awesome. Can I tell you something? The second that both of those men were in the octagon, I knew I was screwed. I had everything on uh, Urbina. I mean, I, I put in a, a safety parlay. That's how I made my winnings with Radke. Um, but again, once those guys stepped in, I was like, man, uh, you know, I, I was looking at it as far as like, oh, Urbina, he's got the reach advantage. He's got the height advantage. I see Radke. He's a brick shit house. That guy is big. He is solid. Um as far as the fight itself, Urbina, his his only mode of offense was throwing a, a front kick up, up the middle, just like keeping him at bay, right? Almost like your little brother coming at you, like, listen, dude, get away, get away. And that, that was it. Whereas Radke, he was charging forward, and that uh, check left hook of his is a thing of beauty, and he landed it perfect. I mean, it was, it was a knockout as, as clear as day, so... I'm very high on Radke. I will not make that mistake again. I followed him on Instagram. I'm going to get him on the show, and we're going to wash our sins uh, vis-a-vis a good old interview. If you if you gentlemen are up for it, and if Chuck Buffalo is up to it as well. If you, if you get Chuck Buffalo on the show, you're, I'll give you a whole month of the Patreon money. How about that? That's, All right. That's impressive. I mean, yeah, I'm so, do it. Okay, so uh, Alex, what about you, man? Uh, how was the night for you, the card? Uh yeah, I mean, all all roads ended at uh, Roman Deledze, which really let me down. Uh, like Dan said, after the first minute of that fight, I knew the fight was over. I I thought that a before mob off knockdown, before we got knocked down. Do you even thought that or after? Uh, because obviously after, but n- well, obviously after, but before that, like seeing how the fight was going to play out. I I really had little faith in Roman Deledze. Um I just felt like the straight punches of a mob off were just a little bit too much for him, a little bit too much pop on him, a little too fast, and he he couldn't be that brooding uh barbarian that he usually is walking forward, throwing hammers, going for takedowns. He couldn't do that with a mob off because he couldn't get off with the strikes going so wild and windy it was wide open up the middle a mob off was torching him all day with the jab and um a mob off beat the shit out of him i don't know how this was a majority decision i thought this would be like a a 50 you know uh, or a 49 fucking 42 scenario with how many 10 eights i thought should be scored for a mob off um he went out there and did the first round did, huh at least that first round. At game. least the first round. At the very least, the first round. And then every other round, 10 9. Like, I don't understand. I mean, maybe the fourth round you can give to Roman Deledze with the takedown. But other than that, like, it was a mob off all day. He was beating Second round, was Second round might have been close too. But it, I, I thought it was a mob off all day. I, I did not see a round you could score for Deledze, in my opinion. And uh, Drew Dober. Drew Dober. Fucked me. Moicano calls out the MMA guru, an absolute animal. Uh, great move. Um, I was still Justin in Jacob. the. I <laughs> I was still in the game though because I had the over in that fight, over one and a half on my open bet sheet. But it ended with Roman Deledze, which really burnt me. That that would have put me over. That would have had me winning a couple hundred dollars on the night. But 
instead i i lose i go home losing a couple hundred dollars you know yeah so i uh felt the same as you about the Dolodeze mob ball fight i picked Dolodeze on the show and then I, but i always said on the show I, I said on the show i was like you know i'm picking Dolodeze, but it's really a pick i'm prepared to be wrong on because i'm picking him because i like him more all things equal i like the line and the guy that's what i like here i don't necessarily think that he's gonna have an easy night ahead of him right but i did think that his heart was there and i thought that Amavov is has doesn't have that that or, or at least has displayed a lack of that whereas Dolodese has not kind of right so that was my thinking and then i see them warming up in the back and i kind of instantly was like you know this is a, a a half class above like Amavov is a half class above Dolodese. he's a little bit more athletic he's a little bit more dynamic he's a little bit faster he's a little bit cleaner and uh, I saw that with them warming up. So my last parlay that I had alive was it, it had uh, – well, I had two. One was Rad – basically, I was going into the main card with a few parlays active. It was Radke, Kizraev, excuse me, Arujo, Brown, Moicano, Dolodeze. And it was um, Muradov, Silva, Brown, Moicano, Dolodeze. And then I had another one, Kizraev, Arujo, Brown, Moicano, and Mabo. But that's neither here nor there. Basically, the push in the kizraev Murdoff fight put me in a situation where no matter who won, Arujo or Silva, I was going to advance. And then I had Moicano and Brown in the next two. They both obviously won. Um, and Dolodeze was the final leg. So I was sitting there, time of the fight, I see the warm-ups. I'm like, Dolodeze is not winning this fight. So I cash out. It was only for like 30 bucks. It was like a $15 bet to pay like 200 But with the push, it would have been like $100. Um, so it was like... 15 to pay 30 or, or you know, 15 to pay hundred. If they're off me 33 or something, I cash out and I put that 33 on a mob off by decision that ends up hitting. And that turned into like 120 bucks. I bet like 60 throughout the night that I had lost. So like, like Dan, I won like 60 bucks, but it was a weekend that I was unsure about. It was a weekend. I didn't want to have a ton of plays. Um, I didn't want to have a ton of uh, liabilities. And I, I just was playing it a little bit closer to the chest. Um, I'm most proud that I just didn't, you know, get crazy and get greedy, right. And try to like bet a lot on Dolodeze or even bet more than I did. It, I was very responsible. Like I, 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 I didn't, I, you know, I think with the breaks, when you have a break week coming up or you have, a, you're coming off a break week, sometimes you're like, ah, this is fun. I want to keep playing and betting and have money on this. And then, you know, you get a little carried away, especially if you're drinking, but with this, uh, now that I know there's a lot of cards in a row and there's more fights coming that I'm even more excited about, I'm being very patient and that's when I have my best success. So going into this weekend, there's a couple spots I like, but I'm more excited for really like there's like three or four fights that I'm really excited about. And I'd rather kind of put a lot more money on those few and just kind of compound and, and get a little bankroll going on some calculated plays. Mm. Yeah. I like that strategy. Any there's of size, like any of size. <laughs> Got stepped on by Brendan Schaub, but yeah, which you saying, should, which great. you should, because <laughs> Brendan Schaub is an absolute legend of this space, the comedy space. Rest in peace to his yes. career. Uh, I, Brendan I'm Schaub, very bummed. Brendan Schaub, white hat. Brian Callen, black hat. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. There we go. So if you want to know, guys, anytime we can't fighter in the perv. That's what I call that show. We, we can't give you too much. <laughs> <laughs> we can't give you too much, guys, but we'll give you little dog whistles yeah. here and there about who you're supposed to support and you know who we don't or you know are are weary of, you know. Um wary. Is it weary? Is it wary? Can both be used? The world may never know. Um, mm -hmm. all right, we got a, a fight card coming up, guys. We got a good main event, we got a lot of fights, so let's get to it. Um, any other last minute uh bow tying you want to do around last week's card? Um Azat Maxim cut him. Uh, everybody who was riding Pete Rodriguez now, is so was, stupid. I was at Maxim. I, I thought he won the fight. I watched no. it. But no, I was no not shot. It too carefully. No shot. No it shot. He won that TV fight. He was winning. So I was like, when he lost, I was like, huh, all right. Yeah. Um, rounds two and three Johnson all the way. All right. Well, what round one is the round I watched the most of. So that makes sense. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, the, De, De, Diana Belbita, keep her just where she is. Who cares? Oh, I think she shamed everybody. And I, that, that was piss poor. That was really well. Poor. She got destroyed the first time they fought, so I don't know what the expectation Molly, was. from a part of the world, like Meatball Day, there's no wrestling in, in where Molly when it comes to the wrestling. When it comes to them getting in the wrestling ring, there's nothing up there. They're all you know, north of the eyebrows, they're all. Uh... 
Yeah. Like Molly doesn't come from like, a part of the world that wrestles well, and she's out here wrestling girls to the ground and armbar them when she's Ronda fucking Rousey. Like, get real, dude. Uh, I, that was crazy. I didn't like that. And everybody I think, was. I hate even more. I hated even more finding out that the NFL beat and Terrence McKinney were a thing. I hated even more finding that out. Ooh, Terrence, that a boy. No, he's an enemy of the show. All right, well, enemy give props where props are due. God. I all right, we'll give him his Everybody was glazing Pete Rodriguez all week. I saw so many cappers taking Pete Rodriguez, Pete Rodriguez, Pete Rodriguez. What about Pete Rodriguez? I just watched a documentary on Mike Jackson. Pete Rodriguez ain't shit, okay? But I'll um, say this. Pete Rodriguez is not a guy you want to fight in the street. And like Dominic Cruz said, he's like from that part of Arizona that they brawl in parking lots and shit. And it's like, yo, let me – That is a, that's a, such a perfect example case of like the type of guy where you're like – you see him like I know I probably have more skills, like I've trained harder and I I know more things about martial arts and I could probably beat him in a fight skill for skill. But you're like, I'm gonna have to knock him out and then knock him out and then knock him out and then kill him because you saw Pete Rodriguez got knocked out cold but was instantly back up and ready to fight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He the so guys like that body shots. You got to go to the liver because you are not going to separate them from their consciousness unless you fucking kill them they're gonna keep coming at you um so you got to go to the body all day same with the dude same with the russian fighters when a guy has a mentality like a true fighting spirit mentality you can't think that you're gonna put him out cold because they get they, they wake back up from knockouts like they have it they have great cardio and they have an inner engine tenacity that just like isn't uh you know what i mean it's 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 just snaps back into the fight you know the fight or flight instinct is there so you got to go to the body rush. And King Mo said this Russians are notoriously vulnerable to the body, but it's not that they're vulnerable. Not everybody's vulnerable to the body. It's just that they're harder not to knock out clean flush on the feet. You know, how often do you see that? Thomas rarely. He got completely dropped and then gets back up and finishes. Um, see what you're saying. Jiang Yang Lee sensational. That was an absolute dismantling of Blake builder. I will never think twice about Yang Lee again. He is sensational. Like that was Yeah, Blake Builder kind of stinks though, now that I think about it. He he might, he might, but that was Chef's Kiss. Like that was and every time every highlight I've ever seen of Jiang Yong Lee, he's out there just dogging dudes. You know, like he, he's like really good, I think. <laughs> I mean shit, Luke, you're talking about he's the Korean Tetsuyo, he's the Korean Tetsuyo Tyra. Yeah, like he's young, he's, athletic, lean, building the more team. jacked though, way more jacked, way more jacked, way more violent, not oh, and way, way uglier too, way uglier. Yeah, I don't too. Mean, yeah, I I mean that he's coming from a part of the world that doesn't have a ton of like talent and or, or a ton of like any UFC champions to speak of. You know what I mean? But he's oh a, a diamond in the rough kind of because mm-hmm. we, we don't see you know everybody else from that season sucks. Like he's the one guy from that season that's like kind of good. Same I, with, uh, I think he's real good. The, the eye test is looking good on that guy. The way he was ripping yeah. it to the body, like yeah. everything was violent. Everything you know, nothing was like, oh, I'm just throwing something to throw. It's like, no, I'm throwing to knock this guy out. Yeah. yeah. He's good. And Blake Builder wanted a grappling match, and then he got the grappling taken to, to him, you know? Right. right. Well, overall, decent card, but we got to move on. Thomas to- Peterson stinks. Oh, Thomas. Yeah. Thomas Peterson cut him. He's dumb. He, I, <laughs> once I saw him getting interviewed for the thing, and he's just like, he doesn't, he doesn't even know his ABCs, guys. Like, you gotta, How about the my, my source tells me he doesn't know his ABCs. He only knows one, two, three. He doesn't know anything past that. Whenever he counts anything, he goes one, two, three, one, two, three. That, that's all he does. But, um, Thomas Peterson, he should be ashamed of himself. Um, Jamal Pogues. I thought that was an entertaining fight. A lot of people were hating on it in the Discord. I thought that was pretty damn entertaining, if you ask me. Oh, I hate that I missed it. You know I love the sloppy was, heavyweights. Yeah, I mean, it was just a prototypical low-ranked heavyweight kind of fight. But, like, I, yeah, I mean. It was Jared Vandera versus uh, Sh- Chase Sherman out there, you I, know? I mean, it, it definitely. here's the thing. I love when a guy who isn't as credentialed can come in and dominate an MMA fight against a guy who, you know, if they met each other in a college wrestling room, Peterson would have his way with pokes and he would never, ever be able to like catch up right. Like to a state champion level wrestler. But 
because Peterson hasn't refined other areas of his game and thought he could go in there and ride the horse that got him there. He was exposed as extremely green and not having a plan B or C. And, you know, as a result, he kept, kept the fight close enough to lose. Pogues was an underdog the entire time. I shouted it out in the discord and I said, I'm live hedging right now on Pogues as an underdog. And that's what happened for me. And that's what allowed me to save all the bets that Peterson was a part of, and then have a little bit of a bankroll to play with the rest of the night. So, um, I did that out in round one immediately, and but he was an underdog pretty much to the end of the fight. Uh, all right, well, with that, should we give our Super Bowl prediction before we get into the card? Yeah, let's talk Super, Super Bowl. Bowls this weekend. Yeah, yeah, I, I think um, it's. What are you guys thinking? I'll go. You go first. I'll go first. Uh, we got Niners at minus two and a half. Last I checked. Really? Oh, wait, wait. Wait. Shut up. The Niners are minus two fifty. No, 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 no. They're they're favorite. Oh, nice. oh. They're favorite to win by two and a half points. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going with the route of coach quarterback. Who's the better coach? Who's the better quarterback? Go with that side. So I'm taking the Chiefs as the underdog. Got a great defense. The only thing, like if this was an outdoor game, I would lean a little bit more towards uh, San Fran because you know Brock Purdy with them tiny hands, he's not going to get it done like Patrick Mahomes tested in Kansas City. Indoors or whatever it is. I mean, it's Vegas, so even if it's outdoors, it doesn't really mean anything. But still going to go with Kansas City here. Not super confident, but it'll be a it'll be a fun little underdog play. I am supremely confident in the Kansas City Chiefs, and I think Travis Kelsey proposes to Taylor Swift directly after the game. Is that a bet optional? In Only Canada. in Canada. Ah, if you got any friends above the Mason Dixon, hit them up. Mess- <laughs> Message, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do. My, uh, my brother-in-law lives in Canada. Right. Okay. So I, I, I already told him about it. I was like, "This is it." So what do you no think? Ring. You think he proposes or what? No, no ring. No. He's putting a ring on it, dude. He, he, he's got the shot in his arm. This met. He's got the shot what in his arm. They just, penis. they just discovered that. They just discovered that he got that in him. He's gonna, he's gonna. <laughs> is he like thirty-seven years old? Let's see. Taylor Swift. Nah, 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 nah. She's like a year or two older than us. She's 34. All right. She's an old broad. <laughs> she She's past her so prime. Travis Kelsey. He's 34. And we all know how much famous athletes love to marry women their own age. So she should be in. She, you know. How about this? He proposes. She denies in front of the world. I mean. How about she, that? She's got a th- She's got a hundred times more money than him. Like, make sure you hit him with the prenup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. Pfizer, Pfizer probably rolled out the the, the dump trucks to pay uh, Kelsey all that money. How about this angle? A dumb uh, truck. He would do it for to just to be on the commercial. He's so like, obviously, he's, obviously, he's, we don't watch the Grammys, but I did see. That Jay Z pulled a Kanye on her. I was like, ah, oh, she didn't really deserve to win. If you I think can this- communicate this product, you can make money off the product. This is her chance to now kind of hit back and be like, oh, no to you, actually, uh, young fella. You are not going to put a ring on it. How about that? The That's only cool. way she could do that is if she like married Steph Curry and then they beat the Nets in the finals. And then she's like, Jay-Z, you oh, suck. Oh, that would be – Jay-Z, I'm you so absolutely awesome. suck. That's <laughs> what you said. I don't even know what you're talking about. Jay-Z used to own the Nets. Oh, I thought he still had some sort of – He might have some tie-in, dude. Brooklyn, I mean, if it's well, running through Brooklyn – What does the Grammys and Jay-Z and all that have to do with Taylor Swift? You, you were trying to communicate a product, and you missed Dan communicating know, a product. I know, I, yeah, I know. I was trying to do the Kanye. Jay-Z right? did the Kanye thing where he was like, actually, Beyonce should have won uh, whatever, album of the year, whatever the hell. So oh, this, oh, this happened. This happened just. He last was night. he was in a tizzy because Beyonce has never won album of the year in her life, which she has no talent. She shouldn't. Um, Taylor Swift is a national treasure. Let her have it. She she went with Lana Del Rey. Luke, we we are big Lana Del Rey supporters over here for sure. Um, yeah, but I do think it's weird that Travis Kelsey can't sacrifice one night of his life when Taylor Swift's going to these football games every Sunday. You know, Travis Kelsey can't show up to the Grammys, the biggest night of Taylor Swift's life. Are you kidding me? Well, I'll tell you what. 
and and he expects her to fly back from Japan to make it to the Super Bowl. I don't believe it's real or any of it's real. When you look into it. But uh, all that said, uh, Chiefs are going to win. Like you said, coach quarterback, you read. Um, and also follow them up. Pfizer, State Farm, uh, all of the money. Uh, you have, you have, uh, it was, you know, Swift, you know all, all the money, all the money. You got to follow the money. So it, it's all, and what is Vegas doing? They're telling you, oh, yeah, they're trying to get all the, all the idiots about the 49ers. Uh, so the Chiefs will win. You know, one last little caveat. One last little caveat. Patrick Mahomes' father just got a Dewey. Either last night or the night before. Is that yeah. in his head? Poor Patrick, man. His dumb brother, his dumb dad. Can anybody, his dumb wife, can anybody in that family get it together to just not embarrass this poor man? Like, he, man. He, he literally does all the right things. He married his high school sweetheart. You know what I mean? He's he's never in trouble. He's got Andy Reid looking out for him. He's the face of every freaking product. And then he's got his dumb family constantly making him look foolish. What did you think about him and Travis Kelsey bullying little, little, uh, awesome Tucker? That was cool. Oh yeah, when they threw his thing out of the way, that was awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm down with that. Justin Tucker can kick rocks. Yeah, you could play a little air guitar while you pick up your kicking tee, loser. Tigers <laughs> <laughs> should be bullied by the bigger guys on the team, especially if they're. He's doing that on purpose. He even says it. He, you know what he does, right? He kicks yeah. like by them and stuff. Yeah. Nobody cares, Legolas. Get out of here. <laughs> When they see my ball flying by their ear, they're going to be like, whoa, I'm afraid of that kicker. No, <laughs> no one said no one ever said no one ever. It's like the Ravens defense are notoriously like the toughest, like really put a beating on guys. But it's like, oh, yeah, no, no, the kicker, that's going to be our intimidation factor. <laughs> Me calling him Legolas should go down as like an all time hilarious burn of all time. Like that's so funny because it makes like it's legolas because like with the bow and arrow, like pew, pew, I'm a little I'm a little elf, you know. But it's also like he kicks with his leg, legolas. Like I just, ah. like, I just said that. I just said that, you know what I mean? But that was but, really funny. Yeah, Luke, that's because you're living the modern times of Gimli in today's society. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, t- just watched the video on YouTube the other day. How powerful was Gimli actually? And mm. the answer is quite. <laughs> <laughs> so. They they might they might have been able to just give the ring to Gimli, he could have taken it himself. That that was a, uh, that was a debate in in this video I saw. So I'm big he, on my Tolkien my Tol- Tolkienology. You he would have that? never been tempted. He was always all about throwing it into the fire. He he was he was the only one that I think he would have never he got been up and tried to hit it with his axe. He got up and tried to hit it with it. He said, "Oh, destroy this thing right now." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the dwarves were only interested in mining. <laughs> a mine. <laughs> <laughs> yep, dwarves are they're addicted to mining. Okay, so we got to get into it. Um, let's mine for some gold on this card, guys. Let's just take it away. Start at the top, guys. UFC Vegas eighty six. Jack Hermanson versus Joe Piper. Body bags. Let's fucking go. Jack Hermanson. One thing you know about him: soft. Uh, going to get stomped by Joe Pfeiffer. It's going to be bad. Going to get knocked the fuck out first round. Absolute slaughter fest. Um, no two ways about it. This is as easy as Randy Brown versus uh, Muslim Salikoff and even better of a line. Um, there's nothing that Jack Hermanson has for Joe Pfeiffer. So an absolute first round finish statement win for Joe Pfeiffer. That's my pick. Um, Jack Hermanson is coming back too soon off that knockout. And and also took too much time off. How can both be true? They are. After I saw Joe Pfeiffer pin my buddy when my buddy was up twelve points on him, I I I took a mental note of that. You know, junior in high school, sophomore in high school. I took a note of that. I said, This kid's gonna be special. I have a supreme eye for talent. And here he is, main event of the evening on an apex card. Anato Moicano would say, fuck it, Apex. I don't want the Apex, brother. Put me in the actual crowd, MMA guru, you fat pig. That's that's what Hanato Moicano would say. Uh, not me, though. I like the Apex. Um, I think you're going to hear a body hit the floor. Then soon after, a body bag will be put it over it. Joe Pfeiffer is an absolute dog. I was on him since... He's been fighting since he's been wrestling. I've been I've been riding this dog for a long time. 
I thought he was going to get in the contender series the first time when he broke his arm. I ha- I, I laid heavy on Joe Pfeiffer that night, and I was supremely disappointed with the arm break. Joe Pfeiffer writes all the wrongs. He puts Jack Hermanson in a body bag, and Jack Hermanson might try to roll around for a leg lock. No, 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 no. Not around Joe Pfeiffer. He is the hardest hitting man to ever walk the earth. He broke Francis and gone. Yeah. He broke Francis Ngannou's record. Give the man some credit. Joe Pfeiffer, Shalik High School, absolute dog. <laughs> uh, man, let's say you. Uh, let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. We're going with Joe Pfeiffer, clearly the A side here. Couldn't have said it better myself for my two colleagues. Um, is it a knockout? Is it a finish? Probably, I would say so. This is definitely a parlay pillar. Unless I'm staring down a hundred thousand dollars, I'm most likely not going to hedge on this thing. I'm supremely confident in Mr. Joe. Um, yeah, I, I really don't have any much more to say on the matter. Joe Pipe for the win. A side. Knockout. A gusta doy la pepe. La pepe. I, I would, it's triple P certified. That's what I'm trying to say. It's PPP certified. All three of us agree. Joe Pfeiffer for the win. And I want to make one thing absolutely clear. Jack Hermanson does not have a grappling advantage, a wrestling advantage, or any sort of advantage at all in this fight. Uh, if you watch a charity match he did with Hamzat Chamaya, a wrestling match they did. You okay? Take yourself off camera if you're going to do things like that. Um <laughs> <laughs> you don't tell me what to do. I, I am the boss of my own. Sound like you're letting the air out of a fucking to- Toyota uh, over there. Like, anyway, um, Hamzat took Jack Hermanson belly to back about five times in a row in two minutes. Okay, so I think that's exactly what Piper can do if he doesn't decide to just walk right up to him, and punch him in the chin, and knock him unconscious. He could just grab him belly to back and fucking throw him into the mount, basically. So it's gonna be bad. Um, Jack Manson is an extremely breakable guy. Very breakable guy. Fra- fragile. Fragile. Um, must be Italian. Not that it's it's from the movie. I'm not saying Jack Manson must be Italian. We know he's from Sweden. Speaking of which, Luke, we got Fille. Somebody who I think is quite fragile must be Andre Italian. Fille. Andre Fille versus Adena Ig. <laughs> I believe it's pronounced Ig. It's not. Ig it? versus Andre Fille. Um this one i mean i'm surprised that dan had some had a dissenting opinion with me here um we've seen so much good work out of andre feely recently the lucas all made a knockout he showed that scrub who was varsity and who was jv uh before that took nathaniel wood to a very close decision a decision i thought andre feely won and then before that took uh bill aljaya to a split decision a decision i thought bill aljaya won um but really you know it was kind of a stalemate in that fight and it was really kind of up to your own discretion whether you give bill the points for um, punching him or you give Philly the points for having his back, but ultimately control does matter. And, um, you know, punching him from him having your back wasn't enough to get him off your back. So it must not have been bothering him all that much. Right. Um, you know, besides the U Anderson Brito knockout, um, Andre Philly done right by us, you know, as of late, I, I think that Dan Ige won the, it's interesting, right? These guys have both been a part of some decisions that I have different opinions about because Dan Ige lost his fight with Bryce Mitchell. And that was, uh, a fight that I really thought he won um, due to damage. You know, if you're going by the new judging criteria, Bryce didn't land a single punch when he had him on the ground. He was just wrapping those legs and holding on for dear life. Um, Bryce was holding on to Dan's legs like a, like a telephone pole in a hurricane. That was good guys. That was fucking really good. That was a good fight. Um, okay. So I'm going with Andre Feely. I love the odds. I, I like the height. I like the fact that he's a better wrestler and everybody thinks he's not. Andre Feely's a great wrestler. He's at an alpha male. He's going to be able to keep the fight on the feet, beat Danny Gay up, have the re- uh, you know have the reach advantage, have the height advantage. Um, and I think if the fight goes to the ground, it'll be Andre that puts him there because he's a better wrestler than Bryce. And if Bryce could put Danny Gay on the ground and control him, so can Andre. So um, great matchup, great gyms. Love the fight. Two cerebral smart fighters um, that also know how to have a fun fun time in there. Super excited for it. I'm going with Andre Feely. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, listen, on this card, we have a lot of newbies, so that's where the vast majority uh, majority of my tape study went. Um, but for this fight, um, 
Yeah, I do like Ige here. I, I see what you're saying with the wrestling um, in comparison to Bryce Mitchell. I definitely think that Feely's entries are better than Bryce Mitchell. But I think when it comes to, you know, that raw strength of, of holding someone down, I think that advantage would go to Bryce. Uh, I don't think I don't think Ige is going to be held down by Feely. Um, I think he's going to have the ability to pop up. And I think the striking advantage does go to Ige and the power. Um, so I, I have a couple of advantages here lined up for Ige. Do I love it? No, not really. Um, but I, I think Feely's kind of going to be on the downslope here. He had a nice little run, but when it's all said and done, he's taken a lot of damage over the years. I don't think he has the ability to inflict the damage upon Ige to really keep him at bay. And like I said, I, I don't think the wrestling control is going to be there either. So um, I see most of the uh, the damage, the big shots coming from Ige. I'm not in love with this pick, but you know I, I have a slight lean on Ige here, but not going to have super high amount of investment on my guy here, Dan Ige. But that's my pick. Alex, please break the tie. Yeah, let me take some of your concerns away, Dan. Dan Ige is going to absolutely destroy Andre Feely. Like, there's no question about this. Uh, Dan Ige is a better version of Nathaniel Wood. Better striking, harder hits, great takedown defense. We saw that against Bryce Mitchell. Um, Andre Feely doesn't have an ounce of muscle on him. He's long. He's rangy. He has the most success on the feet. He's not necessarily the best wrestler. He showed good shades of it against some guys, but uh, I really don't like that you guys are saying he went on a run. He's on a one-fight win streak. Dan Ige should be on a longer fight win streak just because I thought he won that fight against Bryce Mitchell. Uh, when Andre Feely fought Bryce Mitchell, it was an absolute smotherfest. Andre Feely got smothered by Bryce Mitchell. He didn't show any shades of greatness whatsoever where – Dan Ige beat the shit out of Bryce Mitchell. MMA math doesn't always work, and it doesn't because technically Dan Ige lost that fight. They both lost that fight, but Dan Ige fought that fight better. If if you think Andre Feely is going to strap on his wrestling boots and try to take down Dan Ige, you got another thing coming. Always harder to take down those short, stockier guys. Dan Ige's got that surfing bounce. Dan is going to stay up, knock out Andre Feely. I don't think this sees the distance. Danny Gay, at the very least, puts a very big hurt on Andre Feely. He's a tough guy, but I don't think he's going to be strong enough to get Danny Gay to his back. I have Joe Piper's number in my cell phone. If 10 people join the Patreon this week, I will run down. <laughs> <laughs> call, call him right now. Call him right now. Dude, I was just checking the text. Last text I sent him, and it was when he was going to do the show back in June, but one of his teammates died. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and I haven't hit him back up because you don't want to keep asking. You know how it is, guys. It's like you feel like, okay, like I'm just not gonna keep asking. Like things keep coming up. I mean, he he might go kill another teammate just to not have to do our show. You know what I mean? Like I don't need. We don't want <laughs> that to happen. So, um, I I will just leave me I'll wait. You know, maybe if he loses, then maybe he'll do the show. I don't know. Because the funny thing is, we asked him to do the show before he was even on the Contender series, and then he blew up. And Dana White said, "Be like Joe Pfeiffer," and he got famous. And went all Hollywood on us. Went on ho went all Hollywood, joined the Illuminati. They told him not to talk to us. And it's like, we play nice and also like want to join the Illuminati. Like, what, why, why can't we join the Illuminati? I don't understand. Why not us? What does Steve will do and have that, that we don't? Well, or what do we have that he doesn't? You know, maybe that's it. What do we mm. have? We have too much. We need to reduce. We need to like a like marble. We need to carve away at some of these things that are keeping us from the pearly gates of Dana White's private casino, where he will just come bail us out of all of our losses. I don't understand why. It just really bums me out that Dana White doesn't want to come help us out in, in our time of need. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Because I I would help him out. I would do anything for him. And Same. I feel like I feel like the only reason he doesn't is because no one's told him that that we've like that we need it. You know what I mean? And uh, if you guys know Drake or Dana White, I just think that we should be in touch with them. Just get in touch with them. If you're, if you're one of Drake's friends, if you're one of Dana White's friends, just say, look, Dana, I need a damn house too. I need oh, a house yeah. too. We can all oil them up. 
separately. I have, five separate oppo- I have five opponents in the UFC right now at three different weight classes that I will take a fight with on a day's notice if you need me to, Dana. I am your foot soldier. Whatever you need me to do, I've been your evangelist this entire time. Okay? Um, so, you know, I think the fighters should be paid less. All right? That's, that's, <laughs> so don't, I'm not the enemy here. Okay? Um, that's been on record. Been on record. And guess who agrees? The MMA guru. Dustin okay. Jacobin. So, all right, guys, Jack Hermanson's going down. Let's move on. Igor Pateria, the duelist, taking on Robert Brisek. Brisek. Um, this is a newcomer, guys, making his UFC debut, uh, coming off a knockout win um, in a Polish promotion. It seems like a couple of knockout wins, five straight. Um, Bobby Brisek over here is 17 and five with 11 knockouts. Um, and of his losses, He's been knocked out once, or he's been submitted once, knocked out once, and has three decision losses. Uh, so and a heel hook. He lost by heel hook. I said one submission, one submission. Oh, okay. He's taking on Ihor Pateria, who's coming off that heartbreaking defeat to Hoff- Hadolfo Bellato, um, a fight where both of those big-ass men um, almost finished each other at multiple points in the fight, and at the end of round two, he got taken out of there. And he was taking less blows than he was giving, and the fight was not stopped. So one of those weird situations, um, you know, he this guy's kind of weird, right? I mean, let's be real. He comes off the contender series with a knockout win, first round. They give him Nikolai Negamariano. He gets finished, and then they give him Shogun. Standing TKO, though. Yeah, and in one of the weirdest matchups of all time, they give Ior Pateria Shogun, right? Um, I mean, just a fight that, like, you would have had to be – you would have had to have – I mean – I don't know wh- who would have picked Shogun in that fight. You I did. I, mean? I did. I will stand on record. But you that you I do it. stupid shit like that all the time. You pick <laughs> the baddie, the baddie. Like you just never really. You don't. You like punishment. You don't know when to quit. But you know he loses to Carlos Alberg, loses to Bellato. To be honest, I think that one contender series fights and four UFC fights against way high caliber opponents, higher caliber than this guy's ever faced. Um, you know, I think that that gives a big time edge to Pateria. Um, so I'm going to go with Pateria here, uh, just off of the reality that it seems like this guy is kind of a knockout or bust kind of fighter. Um, and Pateria is chaotic and happy to be there and happy to oblige that kind of fight. And I think that as the fight goes on, Pateria is going to have more to prove more experience, um, and just kind of be a couple beats ahead of this guy in terms of what to expect. And, uh, they tried to give. They tried to give um, Robert Brizek. They tried to give him Albert, Albert Dreyer, Dreyer, yeah. uh Malcoon, and they both got canceled. So it almost, you know, this almost he pulled was, out against Malcoon, though. He pulled out against Malcoon. Yeah, yeah, but the latest one, the other guy pulled out. Drive pulled out. So yeah, which was for this card. So he's been preparing to fight on this card, where Ehor hasn't, which is what makes it a little harder to pick. Yeah, because I agree with you. I I'm I'm leaning Eeyore, but knowing that it's on short notice, how ready is he really? And two um, months well, two months ago he was coming off of that loss, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now is that a fight that makes one better? And, and you know, by the way, that fight that he took, um, was at the, the last fight against Bellato was at two hundred five, and this fight is at one eighty five. Yeah, and Carlos Olberg was at 205 as well, which was seven months before the fight against Bellato, and he got brutally knocked out in that one too. Yeah. So, I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but the sport doesn't make sense. And I, you know, I do probably think that this Polish guy is here for a reason. He's exciting. He's like, and you know, Patera being knocked out and kind of back-to-back performances. What do you do with a guy you want to build who's a knockout guy, right? You, you give him it seems like they're kind of I'm switching my pick. Ah, man, this is tough because it's like I kind of have to accept. I have to accept that there's something I don't know in order to pick this. You know. Yeah, let me uh, let me steer this pod back onto the same train here. Like I told you guys, uh, I did tape study on the new guys predominantly. This guy Bryce Jack is really fucking good. Okay. Uh, he okay. is good to know. Good to know that he's good. Good to know. He is yoked out of his mind. Okay, he's a. Oh, that's your takeaway. 
perfect drop. Uh, but in all seriousness, if you want to have a good Monday night, which is you know when this uh, this pod is being produced, watch the last four fights of this guy. He is an animal. Okay, he's not only a physical specimen; he has skills. He has power in both hands. He knows how to manage distance. He's not just like Ehor, just charging in, hoping to get a knockout. He is educated in his striking, and he will not lose. I promise you, he will not lose. Do not take Ehor. Ehor is horribly bad. That's why they matched him up with Shogun, a 75-year-old man. His last fight in the UFC, let's give him someone that even a 75-year-old man could beat. Trust me when I tell you, Bryce Check is going to win. Okay, he's knocking out these Polish guys like it's nothing. By the way, these Polish guys who are also freak of natures, guys who have never been knocked out, he's knocking them out. I need me. I, I don't need to say any more. This guy's really fucking good. Bet on him, please, 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 please. Okay, Nate, hey, I'll 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 pick him just based on my trust for you. You are the front runner. You are the gold medal uh, chair right now. So I'm going with Dan. I'll roll with Dan too. Without further ado, uh, I'll roll with Dan too. Um, I I was leaning Ehor, but the short notice really scared me off. Uh, and at the end of the day, I still think Luke made really good points. Like Ehor has fought top of the top competition, where this guy is losing you know, to well, people. I mean, that guy Bellato is good and touted, and people like him and believe in him and respect him. And he was a big underdog going into that fight, and he almost finished Bellato outright. So I'm going Ehor. Fuck it. Bro, Fuck it. <laughs> you really Fuck. are a glutton for punishment, dude. Fuck you, Dan. This, nah. dude. I'm go. I'm going with Dan just because I can see the earnestness in Dan's voice here. I know that he did the did the work. I, you know, guys, everybody has their own style. I'm not a big tape study guy. I watch every single fight. I've watched every single fight since I was in fifth grade. I don't really need. I did a lot of tape study this card because I had to shake things up. I've had a, a yeah, few bad exactly. cards in a row. I do. Alex, did, did you watch this guy? He is one of the guys that I watched the least tape on, and I was just like, Ehor has this. So, <laughs> no. My thing is, it's like Gianni the Greek, my you know, a guy who I respect, said I don't respect him. Tape study, at all. he's like, tape study is absolutely pointless. It he's lies. Like, he's like, first of all, I mean, we, we I can explain I could explain this in five different ways, right? So if you guys are disagreeing, you can explain it by saying Andre Feely knocked out his last opponent and then lost a decision to what's his face, and he looks sensational in one, and then he doesn't look sensational in the other. It's, million it's, it's, reasons, yeah. it's that simple. It's that simple. You never get the same fighter every time. If you got the same fighter every time, it would be a different story. But you look at it like you look at some of these guys coming in. And they will have one dogged performance where they are the biggest dog in the world, like a Cody Durden, perhaps, right? Or a Tim Elliott. Tim Elliott will show he's the biggest dog in the world and then all of a sudden get tapped out in the third round. Uh, yeah. Cody Durden will show he's the biggest dog by taking Mikhaev to deep waters and taking people to deep waters and then just disappoint you in another event. And And that's how this game works. It's like, Different strategies work against different opponents differently, and there's a lot of margin for error, and we're throwing shit at the wall and seeing if it sticks every week, ladies and gentlemen. All right, well then, do me a favor and just eat a big old bag of chalk and take fight does not go the distance, because it will not, there. but I, ah, I'm telling you, it's going to be price check. Please, Alex, please. Yeah, so... um the the thing that like if you really broke down the math of how many hours and minutes you would need to spend watching the tape and then like Alex says just like these fights are multiple months apart at multiple different samplings of their lives with the, you know there's just so many different variables that you have to consider that it really would uh, don't let your lying eyes deceive you like you look at a Trey Sean Gore the night the, uh, during the week his mom died of diabetes right and then you look at a Trey Sean Gore in a fight against like you know any one of those ultimate fighter guys they lost against who did who did he lose to in the finals oh brian battle so you look at him against like a brian battle and you look at him against like a guy where he was extra motivated because his mom died you look at a buster douglas every single one of his fights and then you look at him when he fights mike tyson like sometimes there's hidden variables that we don't even know about when i hear somebody in somebody's family dies i inst 
on the broadcast, I instantly live bet that person just because you never know the motivation they're going to have or, you know, they're how give a damn's busted. Huh? They're give a damn's busted. Yeah. And then at the same time, you can have a guy whose mom dies and then he's just a completely different fighter because he hasn't been in the gym all week where some guys, their mom dies and they're like, I need to get my mind off this. I got to be in the gym 24 seven all week, you know? So you, you never know, even with that variable. Well, don't, don't look any farther than Ehor. His freaking country got invaded and then he got knocked out. So you would think that he would have a lot of motivation going into that one. And it didn't amount to a hell of beans. So if we're taking that, and Alex, Alex you were the guy that put C for every answer, weren't you? And like, like, uh, weren't you glad I didn't say banana? <laughs> like the, uh, like I say all the time, um, the Ukraine is out, Gaza's in. But at the time, Ukraine was there. At the time of his fight, exactly, yes, at the time, the West Bank, the <laughs> Gaza Strip, <laughs> in, in his asshole. Okay. Um. Brad Tavares, Gregory Rodriguez, uh, five-year age gap here. Gregory Rodriguez is coming in five years younger, even though he looks five years older. Um, he's going to have a two-inch reach advantage, one-inch uh, two-inch height advantage, one-inch reach advantage, and uh, I'll just I'm going to go use the bathroom, so I'll get my pick out of the way quick. RoboCop, RoboCop all day and night. Uh, he's the smarter fighter, the better fighter. He's the more dangerous fighter. He's the more brutal fighter. He is the one with the killer instinct. Brad Tavares either couldn't or wouldn't finish Chris Weidman when he had two broken legs sitting there in front of him. Yep. And no matter what the reason is, I don't like it. So whether he couldn't or whether he wouldn't, bad either way. So fuck Brad Tavares. That's right, I said it. Fuck Brad Tavares. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not picking him ever. I had him to win by finish against Chris Weidman. I had him to win by finish against Chris Weidman. And he's sitting there like, Respect, Chris. Respect, Chris. Yeah, respect. No, guess what? Chris doesn't respect you. Chris hates you. <laughs> Chris fucking hates you. He told me in a dream. And uh, when you look into it. So I can't stand Brad Tavares. I hope he gets knocked out by Robocop bad. And then he'll learn what happens when you mistake kindness for weakness. And what did McGregor say in that? <laughs> what is, you know, don't ever, don't ever. I don't know. I don't like Brad Tavares. He, he, uh, I don't know what it is about him, but he, well, I do know he didn't finish Chris Weidman and he played footsies in there and, and, uh, you know, but I, I, you know, I also kind of, let's just move on. Fuck Brad. Tavares. Well, I despise Chris Weidman as well for being like, yeah, dude, he's a dick for kicking my legs. So oh, I know I, that's what I was just yeah. about to say. Like, that fight ruined both of them for me because it made me realize that I don't like Weidman either because <laughs> of that. Because he literally was mad that he kicked his leg. Like he was perturbed and annoyed about that. It's like and like it's why, like, it's it's far worse than Stephen Wonderboy Thompson saying, you know, oblique kicks are oblique kicks are 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 dirty. It's it's far worse to be like. You shouldn't kick my legs at all because you know I broke my leg once. <laughs> Wonder boy. So kicking your oblique is dirty, but a question mark kick where you're pretending to kick here, but actually kicking here, that's not dirty. You're literally doing trickery. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to pretend like you're a pretend trickster. Man, you're a liar. Know. It's a lie. It's a lie. That's worse than a trick, a lie. Um, I really hope. That Wonder Boy gets a fight against Shavkat. Oh, wait, it already happened. He finished him. No, <laughs> Pfeiffer. Not the same That's weight. Like weight. Yeah. Fuck. By the way, we have uh he's, four he's, we have four middleweight. No, I hope a lot of guys on <laughs> Michelle Pereira. That's who I, want. I, I hope a lot of guys <laughs> at like lower weights than Joe Pfeiffer just have to fight Joe Pfeiffer for some reason. I don't know. Like, I, I just want like um Aljamain Sterling to fight Joe Pfeiffer. Even though Aljamain Sterling has been making some great content lately. I love him. I, I, I love Aljamain Sterling to fight Joe Pfeiffer. Just certain guys, I just want to get knocked out brutally. Like I, I love seeing their. Oh, I like and, Al, I would, we got a no, but now I like Aljamain Sterling. It was a bad example. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I love Aljamain, but uh, Marlon Marais. Like I would love Marlon Marais to fight Joe Pfeiffer. I would love. I would yeah, love. You, um, you can just put him in there with a fucking. Who's the guy who's oh, kind of like Marlon Marais but has hair? Brazilian short guy Pedro Munoz. I, I want Pedro Munoz oh, yeah. to fight Joe Pfeiffer. 
<laughs> Cheeto was... Vera. Cheeto Vera fight Joe Pfeiffer. Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad fight Joe Pfeiffer for sure. Um yeah, man, I'm super cool. Sean Brady, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Brady are like this. I'm gonna create any riffs. I don't know how Bilal Muhammad talks. That was it's pretty kind of like that. It was, yeah, it was pretty good. You just gotta like do this. You gotta do this and then. Uh, <laughs> Not bad. Where are we? What are we doing here? All right. Well, wait, All right. Wait, so, so, oh yeah, Alex. Go I, ahead, I go. haven't given my pick on this. Uh, I disagree with Luke entirely. Brad Tavares uh, has the utmost respect out of me. I mean, he's a guy who took Israel Adesanya to a decision. He's a guy who took Driscus Duplessis to a decision. His worst losses in his career are flash knockouts by Bruno Silva, Edmund Chabazian. Yeah, he got knocked out by Robert Whitaker. He took Yoel Romero to a decision, and sure, he got knocked out by Tim Bush. Whatever. This is before USADA. This is 2014 Tim Bush. Um, but he's been on the highest level for a very long time. He fought in the Ultimate Fighter in 2010, lost to Court McGee season 11, dude. So... He, he's been around the block and back. Um, do I think he's going to beat Gregory Rodriguez? No. But am I going to disrespect Brad Tavares the way Luke did? No. I mean, he made DDP look human. He made DDP. He made DDP rearrange his own damn face. DDP was like, oh, I got so tired in that with the Australian. That, or, or I got so tired in that with the Hawaiian that. I need to redo my whole nose because I can't even breathe. And I, you know, that fucking idiot DDP, that moron DDP, <laughs> you're next. Um, but he made DDP look human. He made Yoel Romero look human. He made, um, he made, uh, fucking Israel Adesanya look human. Israel Adesanya couldn't get him out of there. None of these guys could get him out of there. Gregory Rodriguez gets him out of there. Gregory oh. Rodriguez gets him out of there. He opens the door for him to slaps his ass on the behind um, and pushes him out the door in a gurning. Uh, sadly, uh, sadly, a gurning's coming out to the octagon, a stretcher. Brad Tavares is leaving on a stretcher, but I would never disrespect him the way Luke did. Brad Tavares is a very formidable, good fighter and uh, does well against certain styles. I don't think he does well against Gregory Rodriguez styles. He's he's too brooding. He's He has too much force. He has too much power. He has too much strength. He is going to push through Brad Tavares and uh, all those little baby leg kicks and knock his ass out. If Brad Tavares gets this win, give him a fucking title shot. That's my opinion. Uh, <laughs> you know who, but you know who couldn't, uh, you know whose guard Gregory Rodriguez could not pass a one Joe Selecki. They actually grappled at Quintet and their match went to a draw, knocking both of them out of the uh, competition. But when he got a weight-based thing like that, it actually was better for Joe to get RoboCop out of there. Kind of, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I better to get a better to get a guy go out of there and I, with it with a jiu-jitsu match. Be no, there. better to get a guy who weighs 160, 65 pounds walking around, 170 pounds walking around where RoboCop's fighting at like light heavyweight, right? Middleweight. So he's walking around 200 pounds. A guy like that can, I mean, you guys saw Orlando Sanchez. He had that crushing style, rest in peace. Um, like RoboCop could crush so many people just by pressure alone, make them tap by fucking sitting on their chest. Yep. So shout out to Joe Slack. <laughs> Joel is sucky. <laughs> it's rude. Um, I. I respect RoboCop, uh, but I don't. I think I told Luke this backstage. I think the line the line is a little wide here. Minus two sixty five for a guy who's predominantly a headhunter against, as Alex was saying, Brad Tavares out of a great Lucid. camp. Uh, Extreme Couture, DB Cooper is going to have him all ready to go as far as the boxing and specifically the boxing defense. Um, yeah, like Alex was saying as well. D.B. Cooper was a bank robber. Dewey yeah, Cooper. That's, I, that was the joke. That was the joke. You're, you're stepping on my joke. You're stepping on my joke. Well, the audience doesn't um, you know. The, the audience is smart. We have, we have a highly educated audience. And uh, when we get Chael Sonnen on the show, we're going to find out where D.B. Cooper really is. Because he knows. He knows. Um, Chael, Chael says that he reads every comment. So I think all three of us should start commenting on every video. I'm in. And you, I'm just, say, just say, Chael, if you need anything, we're here. Put soldiers at the ready. I'm in like fun, baby. Um, 
not in love with this fight. I think it's dog or pass. Uh, I think Tavares, he can stick and move. The leg kick will be there. I think the over is really the play here. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of like Tavares in this matchup. I, I think people are overvaluing RoboCop by just a little bit and undervaluing uh, Tavares just the same. So uh, I like Tavares by decision. Obviously, it's always on the table for a RoboCop knockout. He's got supreme power. But again, a bit of a headhunter. I think uh, the defense of Brad Tavares is pretty damn good. And I think he's going to be up for the challenge. I think it's very possible he gets the win. Not crazy about it. Definitely dog or pass. And I'll leave it at that. Play the over, if anything. Before we uh, switch off this, Dan, what if I told you Brad Tavares does better against better opponents yeah. than he does worse opponents? Yeah. I, I Listen, uh, like I said, RoboCop is good. So that's that's good for me. Favorable. Perfect. Right, Michael Johnson versus Darius Flowers. Darius Flowers, that's the homie that uh, messed up the whole game for the Ravens, right? No, yeah. that's yeah. Zay Flowers. <laughs> Um, Darius Flowers is actually the guy that I was referencing, I think last week, the guy who was fighting and like kept doing like a bunch of rope dope strategies where he would act like he's hurt. He did then, one. He did the one time. Yeah. Again, against Jake Matthews, against Jake Matthews. That's been his only fight in the UFC. His fight on the contender series. He like Batista bombed the guy. He pile drove the guy and ended the fight the guy went in for a takedown he picked him up upside down and jumped up and spiked his head um that's how he got to the show now he's here he he showed a lot of promise against jake matthews on short notice if you ask me um i'm i'm gonna roll with flowers on this one he's got the youth he's got the pop he's got the power and he's got those veteran tricks that michael johnson will have from being the old gamey veteran Darius Flowers faked a nut shot he got kicked in the stomach faked a nut shot he got hit in the body acted like he was about to go down when Jake Matthews came in started firing like a piston um I I, I think Darius Flowers shows a lot of promise that first fight in the UFC was a bit of a fluke he came in on short notice he knew he was desperate he was off the couch he he was doing a bunch of desperate maneuvers but this time I think we see the best Darius Flowers that we've seen yeah, let me rock this one real quick. First and foremost, what has to be brought up is 2023, okay, before Flowers was in the UFC, maybe late 2022, I forget. He fought at 185, okay? First fight in the UFC, fighting at 170. This fight is at 155, okay? So I will – that's one thing we really have to keep track of. How is the weight cut going to be? Because that's going to be quite significant. Even if he makes it, is he going to be sick? Is he going to be compromised? That being said – if he can successfully do this weight cut, what, what's funny? What's going on? He's going to come in like Luana Carolina and, and Michael Johnson's going to be like, he has to drop one more pound or, or I'm not going to fight him. And then he's going to come in and he's going to drop that pound and just drop nukes on him. Yeah. So again, if it's a su successful weight cut, I do like flowers here. Like you were saying, very tough matchup. Your first fight in the UFC. Okay. UFC debutante. You take it short notice. You take on a guy like Jake Matthews, who's been in the UFC for a decade while he's 26 years old, a guy who could do a little bit of everything. He could wrestle. He could submit. He can strike. Just a very, very, very tough matchup for a UFC debutante. That being said, he did show himself very well in that first round. He has power in both hands. Very strong dude. He showed a little bit of wrestling chops, which I would assume are, have gotten even better. Um, I like this guy a lot. He has really good head movement. He moves around laterally. Uh, he closes the distance well. And in this matchup, he doesn't have to worry about the wrestling. He doesn't have to worry about leg kicks. <laughs> we have Michael Johnson as a very one-dimensional fighter. And I've seen Michael Johnson succumb to an uppercut once or twice. And that seems to be uh, Mr. Flowers' bomb of choice. So I, I like Flowers a lot in this matchup. Again, contingent on that weight cut. Watch the uh, the weigh-in show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think that's going to play a huge, huge factor. But again, successful weight cut, successful flowers. I'm He's fought some UFC caliber, con uh, you know, competitors in his day too. He got knocked out by Bobby Volker. Do you remember the guy that uh, fucking Robbie Lawler knocked out with the head kick and stood like yep. this right was, after? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby Volker. That, that was the fight that turned Robbie Lawler around. Yeah, that yeah. Get it, moment. Yeah, it was like almost like I think it was his second fight after uh, the UFC bought Strike Force, and he just came over like a bat out of hell. No, he uh, was and, in Strike Force. Huh? It was 100% in Strike Force. Oh, was that in Strike Force where he knocked out Bobby Volker? In Strike Force. And uh, then the oh. UFC bought Strike Force and he came over and he was like, they, yeah, resurged. Got a couple OGs here, folks. Strike Force references, OGs in the house. The, when Strike Force was competing with the UFC, that was a good time. That, that like, they, we had, you had some stuff going on in Japan. You had some stuff. I think it was Dream. You had Dream. You had uh, K1. You had. Strike no, Force. Luke, you're wrong. I'm wrong. UFC on Fox 8. Head kick knockout. Robbie Lawler over Bobby Bulliker. You were incorrect. I knew it was in the UFC. You were well, then, incorrect. Well, then it's not the one that he took a ballot. It's the one that he took a ballot. Yeah, I guess it was. No, it's the one where he went. And then in the. Um, fight back after the UFC, right? I think it was Robbie Lawler's first fight back into the UFC. Maybe his second. Let's see. Let's do a little dig in here. No, he beat Bo uh, Josh Koscheck first, first round knockout, and then Bobby Volaker, then Rory McDonald split decision, lost to Johnny Hendricks, beat Jake Allenberger, Matt Brown, Johnny Hendricks, Rory McDonald again, Carlos Condit, then lost to Tyron Woodley. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because Robbie had that time where when GSP left, where like there was a couple fights that like he had for the like he fought like Hendrix got robbed by GSP, and then Robbie got robbed by Hendrix, and then um Robbie made it right against Hendrix later after he beat Jake Allenberger and Matt Brown to win by split decision and get the belt, defended it against Rory and Carlos to lose it to Tyron Woodley. All right, the, and uh, history. <laughs> so, yeah. so who are you taking, Luke? Michael Johnson or Darius I Flowers? Michael Johnson. Um, nothing you guys said gave me any confidence in <laughs> Darius Flowers. Uh, you know, I'm looking at his record, and he, like you said, lost to Bobby Volker, who's 44 years old now, and, and he lost to him in 2018. He's he's long gone, is my point, and uh, he couldn't beat him then. Um, lost to Josh Fremd on the amateur scene too. Right, split decision though, but I mean that's when Fremd was uh, it's 2016, so it's like mm -hmm. he's, he, he's just coming out of Slippery Rock. He probably uh, wrestle fucked him, and Michael Johnson's not going to do that. I'm just saying, Michael Johnson's such a savvy vet, so experienced, and uh, you know, he did just get knocked out. A I, bad one, I think a bad if, knockout. If Johnson can beat Mark Jacase, he can beat Darius Flowers. Is that fair? No. Mark is a 16 and five there with way more UFC experience. Darius Flowers is 12 and six with no UFC experience. So Michael Johnson has 28 UFC fights, guys. His entire fucking career has been in the UFC. Yeah, Mark Jacase hasn't knocked anyone out in like a decade. He's like a wrestler now. Um, Going with Michael Johnson. All right. I, I don't have a reason to pick Darius Flowers here. This before we go on to the next fight, oh, you guys. Last point, but before we go on to the next fight, this is what Khabib would say. Khabib would say, "Brother, you have jujitsu tattoo, and you have five submission losses, brother. How you have jujitsu tattoo, brother?" That's what Khabib would say. For sure. Um, so before we get on to the next one, what do you guys think is going to be the main event for UFC 300? Khabib GSP at 165. Impossible. Neither of them are in the USADA testing pool, or the no. Team. But they get a conditional thing, don't they? If there they're last-minute replacements, and we don't even know that they're not in the USADA testing pool, or whatever pool it is now. The GSP band, is like, Howling. I like to do it for the for the. <laughs> I like to do it for the comfort to know no, that Bruce I am. Said he would never fight again. He already said he would never fight again. Yeah. And well, he's, he's so did Khabib. And like you guys think Khabib's just going to go back on the entire Muslim community? when he told them that the reason he's not fighting is because his mother told him not to fight anymore. Like he's not going to defy his mother's wishes. That's Haram. So either Khabib changes religion and fights again, or he remains a Muslim and doesn't fight again. That's it's kind of like the same people saying Khabib's going to fight again. It's like, so is he going to completely change his whole personality? And so life? what's your alternative, Luke? Don't, don't, don't give uh, backlash without an alternative. I got like. a couple options. Okay. Spin them. <laughs> None of them are good. 
Okay. Uh, I like Deontay Wilder versus Nate Diaz. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right, that's one talking. option. That's one option. That's um, an option. In MMA, though. In MMA. In MMA. I would say a lot worse than GSP versus Habib, but, you know, go on. Well, fight. I mean, Deontay Wilder's in a testing pool of sorts. He's in boxing. And, Shooters you know. got to shoot. That's fine. All right. So, not that's like, I think really it's going to be Pereira versus Izzy 3. Oh, at, two, at two of them. Shut up. It could be that. Okay. Or it could be. DDP versus E at 155. DDP who? Driscus Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya at 185. Oh, you said 155. I was 185. Sorry, 185. Um, it could be Strickland versus DDP in a rematch. <sighs> None of these feel like it, though, right? None of them feel like it. Maybe Izzy and Pereira at 205. Maybe. But Let's that- think. What would have fallen <laughs> into Dana White's lap? Dana White said it just fell into my lap. Strickland versus no. Strickland versus uh, DDP two would would fall into his lap because it was a I, controversial decision. Dana White said it himself. He thought DDP yeah. or, or that Sean Strickland won that fight. A lot of people were saying Khabib versus Edwards, and I was like, wrong, Dagestani. It's Edwards and Islam. But wait, isn't that a is there a, a, a Ramadan thing going on? I I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Ramadan starts March tenth. Yeah, and the fight's a month later, so no, it's yeah. not going to be anybody celebrating Ramadan. Um, yeah, it's like who the hell I come to this damn show every Sean week and versus I celebrate Durante Ramadan. Davis in a boxing match. <laughs> like, see, but that's not a main event. That's not UFC 300. That's not MMA. Like, it's got to be like I don't like. I'm trying to think. Like, <laughs> McGregor Chandler inaugural 165 yeah. title. But no, they will not do 165. Uh, but I, I, I've been hearing, I've been hearing, and I saw Sugar Sean O'Malley make a clickbait thing saying that that was the fight announced. Um, I don't like that, Sean. Cut it out. I get duped too much. Don't need you duping me too. <laughs> it, it, even if it's McGregor Chandler, that's something like that's a fight we already are have been promised. So it's not gonna blow our minds or be super exciting. Like and and Chandler Jones is healthy. Maybe Jones is healthy. He's a freak athlete. He can recover quick. Jones no. Aspinall, I don't know. No. It fell into his lap. Lap. Ronda Rousey versus yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is in the past, and this is why it's so bad that these other promotions are bad. It's that you had in the past like a case to be made that Fedor was the best heavyweight and Brock Lesnar was the champion. <gasps> Alistair Overy makes his 155 pound he debut. Does not even look. He, Alistair Overy makes his 155 pound <laughs> debut. <laughs> and, and, Alistair. And, and he and he comes in and every single vein is popping okay, out of that. Let's body. change it. Change entirely. What if you could make a wish? And get one fight, any fight, any fight from any time of any. But what would it? Wearing be? this hat, they think I'm on Make a Wish right now. So, it's... so this is actually great. Go on. Um, not well, yeah. uh, it's you more so look just like a sketchy music producer. Um, <laughs> hey guys, you ever heard of Motown? Let Let me sign you on one of these deals real quick. I ain't no jive turkey. Not that kind. I'm more oh, okay. thinking like the alchemist, <laughs> the alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so if you could give me like a wave, the magic wand, Luke, you get any fight, any fight, any fight. What would you, what would you pick? Jones Francis. No, shut up. Any fight. <laughs> Think about it for a second. Any, and you in the comments, comment, any fight, any fight at all. It does, any promotion, any weight class, anything at all, anything, anything, anything. Luke, I swear you're going down your Jersey Jerry arc. The more no, just... the more days I, I, I spend apart from you, you're turning into Jersey Jerry. It is what it is, and I can't change the past. And Okay, how about this? How about this? UFC 100, Lesnar versus Mir, heavyweight, headliner. UFC 200 was supposed to be I'm thinking. Jones Cormier 205. Now we're going back down to 185. I think it keeps going down. What's the best 185 fight you can make? It sucks because it would be Adesanya with Pereira. I don't want that. I don't... Ah, Adesanya. There are no, there are no better, fights. But... I, there, there's really just no fights. There's no fight I even care about seeing. There's no fight. 
because everybody who I even used to like isn't in their prime anymore. And yeah. there's no stakes. That's the problem. There's no stakes. No right stakes. Now. Nick no, Diaz no was stakes. at the card this past weekend. No stakes. Nick for Snake. I wouldn't want They're to down. That. One last fight for each of them for the bag. They each get nah. a huge bag. They would never do that. Ariel Hawani once asked Nate Diaz if he's ever been bullied. He said, no, nah, I got a big brother, dude. <laughs> I nah. literally do not even have a fight I could name that I would want to see. Hasbulla versus Brad Williams. <laughs> I'd rather see him against fucking the guy from... They don't even have the same... Like, they're different. <laughs> they're different... I don't know how to say this. In this episode, dude. I don't... <laughs> just, um, just moving on. But uh, Different disabilities. This is an interesting... Guys, in the comments, I need you to comment. If you could have any fucking fight, what would it be? Even with those restrictions taken away... I want Dana White versus Tito Ortiz. That All I want Holy is Dana White versus Tito fuck. Ortiz. I, I want that fight. We, we were robbed of it. I, I want Dana White versus Tito Ortiz. And and that's the only bullshit fight I'll take. I don't that's want why this, he's getting in shape. I don't want Zuck versus uh I don't want Zuck versus uh, Elon. Like I want if if it's going to be one of these spectacle performances, I either want Bradley Martin versus Demetrius Johnson or <laughs> or yeah. I want um Dana White versus Tito Ortiz. What if I'm, I'm genuinely in a pit of despair that I can't even think of one fight? D- dude, it fell into Dana's lap. He he, Nick Diaz was at the fights last weekend. What if it's Nick Diaz versus Liam Edwards? Like I like think about it. <laughs> Rewind the clock ten years, and I would say BJ Penn versus somebody, Anderson Silva versus somebody. Those, like those two were names that made me like get excited. You know what I mean? There's nobody that gives me that feeling right now. Nobody, not one fucking fighter that makes me feel like Anderson Silva made me feel or makes me feel like BJ Penn made me feel or makes me feel like Chuck Liddell made me feel or makes me feel like. What champion isn't booked? We got Sugar Sean booked. We've got we've got Pantoja. He fought recently, right? He fought like in the last month. You're making me sadder. You're making me more sad. You're making me more sad because who gives a fuck? Again, no stakes. Like, yeah, Pantoja, he could fight one. He's so he's he's so far and above his weight class right now that it's kind of like yeah. he's, he's like Valentina Shevchenko right now. It's well, like, he's not a main event. The un- you would never put – He's not a fucking main event. So so we got John Jones. He's sidelined. We've got Pereira. We got a lot which, of – You know we have a lot more show to do, so let's think while we drink, all right? Uh, we've got we have, one more fight to break down. Yes. But then we have to do the Patreon. Yes, so, for sure. Guys, for sure. maybe we'll be able to answer this question in the Patreon where we can be a little bit more liberal with our language, a little bit more loose with our tongues. Uh, but join us in the Patreon if you want to hear that. And we'll take you through the last fight of the main card right here, and then we'll hop over to the Patreon. Hidalfo Vieira versus Armand Petrosian. Fucking fight we already broke down before. This is a rebooking. Um, we obviously already broke this one down, but to me, it's – Super crazy that this is a pick 'em. I think Petrosian wins this. I think that this is an easy win for Petrosian. I'm taking Petrosian all day, all night, seven times on Sunday. Like I don't know how else to say it. Like this is just to me, he should be as big of a favorite as as anybody else is. You know what I mean? Um, like I, I don't know. Um, what, what am I missing here, guys? The black belt hunter stinks. I don't. I don't believe in him. I'm in agreement with you. I think you're trick. right. Jiu-jitsu is a parlor trick. <laughs> <laughs> more. Nothing more. I'll go with Petrosian as well. He's been, you know, I feel like this fight has been booked for like three years now. So I have to believe he's been drilling takedown defense. Obviously a way better striker. And and his striking kind of lends itself to takedown defense because he operates from the outside and, you know, sticks and moves with the jab. So I like Petrosian as well. Is it a parlay pillar? <laughs> It's borderline for me. I'm not as gung ho as Luke, but uh, yeah, I'll take Petrosian as well. Yeah, like Dan, I'm pretty hesitant on Petrosian. A lot less hesitant, or a lot more hesitant than I am on Ige. Um, I, I'm I'm rolling with Petrosian. I don't have much confidence in the black belt hunter. I think Petrosian keeps distance very well. 
Yes, we will be in the smaller cage in the apex, but I still think he keeps the distance, keeps him off of him, and just uh, it, it's going to be similar to how a Mavolf dealt with um, Roman Delente. I want to say Georgian Delente because he's from Georgia, but apparently he's also from Rome. Don't necessarily understand. Shout out to Sublime. Um, I'm going to roll with Petrosian on this one. Just, I think the straight punches are going to win the fight, and I don't think that Hadolfo Vieira is going to be able to get him to the ground, and I don't think he's going to be able to land a big strike on him with that big-ass body of his. I think he's going to tire after the first round. Even if Hadolfo Vieira spends the first round winning, getting favorable grappling positions, I, I don't think it lasts for three rounds. I don't think he has that capability. Um Armand Petrosi and Triple P certified. Pet, pet, pet. Pet, pet, pet. I am next, estoy pe, pe, pe. I thought of a fight that at least quenches my thirst and at least makes me, I can at least swallow it. And I go, oh, that was refreshing. I kind of like that, you know? I thought of one. You're going to be blown away. It's the save only it for the Patreon. Thing. Okay, I'll save it for the Patreon. <laughs> you evil son of a bitch, Dan. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's take him through our full picks, top to bottom. Uh, I'm going, okay, you, blah, someone else start. I, got, I can go first. Uh, if you're rolling with me, you're going Armand Petrosian, Darius Flowers, Gregory Rodriguez, Robert Brisek. I'm thank sure. you. Thank you. Switch and triple P certify. It's a favor. It, it, you guys wouldn't understand. On the day of my daughter's wedding, Dan came up to me. He told me, <laughs> I have to bet on Robert. I'm taking Robert, not R. Kelly, but we're going with Danny Gay, and then we're going with Joe Pfeiffer. Rounded out, Pfeiffer, E. Gay, Brisek, Rodriguez, Flowers, Petrosian. I get hated on sometimes because I'll make a switch right in the middle and then keep going, and people don't understand. People just can't wrap their heads around it. All right, Dan, take it away. All right, if you're rolling with me, welcome to the 60% Club. We're starting off with Joe Pfeiffer at the very top, the clear A side. Then we come down to Dan Ige, followed by Robert Bryschek, Brett Varis, Darius Flowers, and lastly, Armin Petrosian. And if you're rolling with me, top to bottom, Joe Pfeiffer, Andre Feely, Robert Bryschek, Gregory Rodriguez, Michael Johnson and Armand Petrosian. Trophy certified picks for you are Joe Piper, Robert Bryjek, Robocop, and Armand Petrosian. Um, four trophy certified picks on the main card. Tune into the Patreon. We have a few fights to break down over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more fights to break down on the Patreon. Join us there, and I'll tell you what my idea was for UFC 300 main event. And you can support Alex. Like I said, he got fired. Um, <laughs> Or <laughs> it's just kidding. He got laid off. He got laid off. But uh, we're going to give Alex all the money in February. Um, and that's that. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. We love you. And uh, we'll see you on that Patreon. Get in there for the full year. If you join for a month, it literally is costing us money at a certain point. It's not even like Patreon with the fees and the taxes and and uh, upkeep and bandwidth costs. It's pretty much just costing us fucking money. So you just got to get in there for the full year. Um if, if you don't mind, that would help us out and we'll, uh, we'll treat Alex. So thanks. Mm -hmm.